All right, let's uh, let's make some weird sounds. <coughs> <laughs> hey, twit my itch. What's going on? Hey, you had, uh, I think it was you, uh, had that question last time about uh, a single instance of SC synth and a bunch of SC langs. And, uh, not loud enough. Okay, hang on a sec. All right, I uh, try to turn that up just a little bit. Let me know if that's uh, too loud. And it's tough to isolate the my voice from my computer fans sort of screaming. But yeah, you had a question last time, yeah, about the single SC synth and multiple. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I guess I can try to get a little closer to the mic, but uh, I mean, I've got on OBS, I've got the mic signal all the way up at zero dB. Cool, thank you. And welcome to the stream, Space Time Decor. But yeah, uh, Twip My Age, last time I, I offered some sort of solution along the lines of, uh, and, and you may have figured this out already, but you have your P bind and you've got a pattern and you want to sort of send it to a remote server. Um, there is a server key and here you'd you know make some uh server.new um name you know whatever and this would be net address dot new um ip address oops and port, which should be, I think, 57110 for stuff going directly to the server. And then here you would just specify that remote server. And I think you can also, you know, say something like server.default equals this new server. Uh, that's also an option. But I think I was looking at the um, pbind help file and Uh, yeah, the, um, let me just, yeah, here it is. By default, events play synths on a server. Such note events use the following keys. Instrument, uh, I have no idea what variant is, and then server. And I think the default value is server.default, but you can just provide another server, uh, making sure to declare it earlier, uh, and then just make sure that the you know the IP address of the computer running SC synth, and then the port should be 57110, and then you should be all good to do something like this. Uh, tough thing to test for me. I mean, I'd, I'd need to have, I mean, you, you've got sort of a custom setup there, but uh, yeah, I think that's what it would look like. Yeah, there's just this server key that note events understand when you're using pbind. Okay, let me test some sound here for a second. How is that volume-wise? Um, I know that's kind of low. Can make it a little louder. No, I have not used Jitlib. I unfortunately know very little about it, basically nothing. Cool, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so um, something I was thinking about doing today. Uh, uh, what am I doing? Okay, so let me load all my saxophone samples in. Uh, where are they? Sounds, this is audio. 
get this folder path name dot new and this make buff dict is not part of the standard library. I made this method. Yeah, and it turns uh, it turns a, a a path name into a dictionary of buffers. So I have this uh, directory of all sorts of baritone saxophone samples. So actually, I want, is this going to make sound? Yeah, looks like it's making sound. Um, you know, let me just check my MIDI setup here just in case uh Something is super quiet. Actually, this does look a little quiet, so I'm going to turn this up. So maybe that'll be a little louder. Yeah, so if we run this, now I have this uh, dictionary. So I can do B at ref at zero dot play. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no, I'll do testing these samples here, buff num. And something I was sort of messing around with earlier was uh, I'm going to try and uh, use buff read to just and use phaser to sort of read through and loop through just a small segment of that and like make a pitch out of it. So let's start here. Save this as uh, sketches. And acoustic. Those are all the keys. How's everybody doing? How's it going? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Yeah, thanks again for tuning in. And we need phaser. So I'm gonna use phaser, audio rate phaser to read through the buffer. Don't need a trigger. I'll make an argument for rate, which will be one by default. So you know, this is like a number of samples, number of, you know, how much increase per sample. So we're just doing one value per sample. So each sample is going to increase by one, which is what we want for uh, reading through the, uh, reading through a buffer. And start, end. So if we start at something like zero and end something like 44, 100, this will just loop through the first second of audio, I think. 
shrink this down. And let's just uh, pan to AR sig pan amp. It's like a habit I've gotten into at one point. It's just you have some mono signal, and then right before you send it out, you pan to it. That way you can make it stereo and pan it left, right, and then amp. So. Yeah, thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying the tutorial series. I'm really, I'm really with happy with happy with how it's grown. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate that it's gotten to the point where if I want to make a video, it, I mean, it kind of takes me a long time. Uh, I wish I could crank them out super fast, but you know, it's. Uh, quality over quantity, I think. Okay, so what if we just play this? Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. And I'm gonna go ahead and just immediately turn this into a synth def. No, 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 it's capital D, capital D. Synth def dab new, uh, loop buff. And we will add that. what I want and let's go ahead and make a synth loop buff uh, put that in a new line I guess mm, buff e at oh wait a minute oh, I was just using the default value here and it just happened to be breath I guess because that's the alphabetically the first one Awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah, interactive installations. That is that's fun stuff. Yeah, my my stream on Friday I was uh finishing up well, I was making progress on that breadboard, a giant collection of breadboards. Uh let's just do breath at zero dot buff num. And amp is 2.5. And um, okay, so if we do start, let's just start uh, 50,000 samples in. And so now if we do like uh, 60,000, pan zero, amp 0.5. No, I already did amp. What am I doing? Let's put this down here. In pan amp out. Yeah, so if we make this shorter and shorter, eventually we get a tone. And that's not what I wanted. Uh, And then we can, uh, let's see, what was I doing earlier? What I want to do is be able to specify a frequency. You know, I want to say, give me 500 hertz or like this MIDI note and have it set these automatically. So, So if we have uh, some number of samples, you know, like 5,000 samples, then that divided by the sampling rate, is that my sampling rate? Yeah, is the amount of time that 5,000 samples occupies. And the reciprocal of that is the frequency. Right, so the difference here is 250. So that's 176.4 hertz. I think. 176.4. Yeah. So let me think about this. So if we want to specify 
a frequency. So let's say, you know, give me 400 hertz. Just like a scratch padding here. Uh, that would be 1 divided by some number divided by the sampling rate. So I think what it is is to get the uh, so some you just have some start value which is like some arbitrary value and then the end let's say given frequency end equals start plus forty four thousand one hundred. by the frequency, I think. Yeah, because here's our reciprocal. We just need to add that value to the start to get our n. So if we say freak by default, I don't know, 200. And we want to do start plus sample rate. Uh, divided by frequency. Yeah, because if we specify a frequency of like 200, then that's 40,100 over 200. See, that's the... Yeah, that's the uh, number of samples. Yeah, 20 hertz, one cycle is 2,205 samples. So we just add that to start. Let's see, will that compile? Okay, fine. And so if I say frequency 100, 200. Hey! It works. Doesn't sound very interesting. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know you couldn't do that. Kind of annoying. All right, for, let's get an envelope here. Enough of this nonsense. Let's just. Uh, I'm gonna do an env dot uh, zero one. Well, I'm gonna. I could use ADSR, but what I don't like about ADSR is that you only have one curve value for all segments. So I kind of like to make a sustaining envelope manually. So we'll go down, start at zero, go up to one, down to a sustained level, stay at a sustained level for some period of time, and then back to zero. And so we get an attack time, a decay time. Uh, this is a, gonna be a sustaining envelope, so the amount of time spent between these two points doesn't actually matter. Setting it to zero means it's just one control cycle, I think. And then an attack curve, a decay curve, doesn't matter, release curve. And then a release node. And this is which item in this array where you want to sustain. And so zero, one, two, three. I want to sustain here as long as the gate is open. And then we need a gate argument and done. 
Yeah. Wow. Those typos. Two. Oh yeah, uh, and then I gotta define all my uh, arguments. I sometimes use reciprocal, you know, when you're doing stuff like this. You know, but also you can just do one over. Uh, where was I? Okay, so arguments. Attack. Let's make it short. Decay. Uh, stain level one. No, we'll make this an actual 0 0.5. 0 0.1. 0 0.01. What else do we have? Release. Set that to one second. And curve for attack, we'll set that to one. Curve for decay, we'll set that to negative one. And I think negative default values have to be in parentheses. I think it's like a syntax thing. And then we need gate one by default. Cool, but of course we also need to apply the envelope. All right. So if we do that and give this a name, then we can do this. Yeah, and it goes away, right? It's on action two. All right, so. Now, wait a minute, let's make a, we can just talk to the uh, default group, I think. It's a lazy way of doing it. Okay, so we got an envelope. That is sort of nice. Why don't we not always start at the same sample and sometimes start 5,000 samples in, sometimes uh, 100,000 samples in. Okay, what we need frequency equals 100. Come to the machine. Come to the machine. Was that, uh, is that Pink Floyd you're talking about? I'm trying to remember that. All right, what we need is a bunch of like random uh, controls, like a bunch of noise generators to vary some of these parameters. So let's put a filter on this, I think that would be nice. Uh, sig, some cutoff frequency, and some quality. But these are going to be unit generators. So we'll declare those as variables. Noise one dot kr uh, 
0.5, uh, CF low, CF high. Do something similar for RQ. Uh, RQ low and RQ high, we'll declare those up here. Uh, maybe like 100. Just some sensible default values, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, seems to like it, and let's just try it. Does not, oh, something weird is happening. Uh, I RQ low, RQ high. That looks okay. What if we change these? something even more conservative. Uh, all right, CF, RQ. Arch, yes. Uh, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I see the problem. Anyone in chat see the problem? The problem is that I'm an idiot. The output for RQ, I can, but the, the problem is that I typed exp rand instead of exp range. So this will fix it. I'm like 99% sure. Yeah. By the way, are you are you hearing that? Because I don't see level on on OBS. Let me know if that is actually making sound. Okay, I turned it up just a little bit. That's good. I think it's like a graphical glitch or something on OBS. But, uh, okay. Let's, you know what I like to do? This is just something I tend to do all the time, even though it looks syntactically kind of confusing. It's just control the frequency of a noise generator with a noise generator. We'll do that and that, and this just makes the randomness less predictable and a little more interesting, I think. And what did I do wrong? Oh, that's a mess. Okay, that looks better. No, it doesn't. Uh, what? Class not defined. <laughs> uh, I need to tell it what kind of LF noise. LF noise one for linear interpolation.
Let's make a variable called freak, which will be equal to something that we set at the top. And then we can use that like to set the uh, low and high bounds of the cutoff frequency. Uh, and your problem is what exactly? That needs a comma. That sounds a little more interesting. Let's uh, add some deviation in the panning. Just going to copy this. Uh, bipolar pan deviation. Uh, so we need a variable for that and uh, set that to like 0.25 and maybe change these numbers a little bit. It seems to work fine. Yeah, you can do that with P key to my itch. So if you have a pattern Uh, I mean, you can also put it in a function and, and do it that way, but if you're making a pattern um, and you have some frequency and then you want to set some cutoff and you want to use this frequency value to do it, you can say P key frequency. And that'll just pull whatever value. In, that, in each event, it's going to say, okay, what was the value for frequency? Use that here. And then you can like do math with it and stuff like that. Yeah, eventually I want to start making like a pattern with this sort of thing. So where were we? We got some panning. Let's see if that's actually working. So if we say pan deviation 0.5. I want that to change a little bit more rapidly. that a little bit higher and then we can make a bunch of these That's kind of cool. I would like a little bit of amplitude variation, because why not? Uh, I can put this anywhere, really. I guess I'll just put it here. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Multiplication is commutative. So. Amp control equals another noise generator. Uh, make that, I want this to be s subtle changes. Never, never changing faster than once every two seconds. And I do not want bipolar. I want X range. Uh, 
uh, from some minimum amplitude to one. So this is just going to sort of randomly attenuate each sound a little bit with an amplitude minimum of 0.5. Maybe, maybe a little bit less, make it a little bit more pronounced. So what if we turn this into a function? Just set some default value. And we say make, I'll just call this play loop buff. This function is just going to take a frequency value as an input argument and then produce a synth. So then we can do play loop buff dot value 30. All right, that's frequency. So Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, problem with this function though is that you know we have no access anymore to like amplitude and stuff like that. So that was maybe that was just an empty exercise. Uh, I will leave this as a. I mean, we're going to make patterns eventually. This is just like our testing synth. Uh, and we never finished this, so let's do that. Okay, amp times amp control. So now this should sort of. Get rid of that. That is a syntax error waiting to happen. It's a lot of panning. So, okay, that's neat, I guess. Is there anything else we can do to make this sound like extra cool? I don't think. Uh, I would probably not call this granular synthesis. Uh, I, yeah, it's more like wavetable synthesis i mean we, we've just got i mean the buffer that we're dealing with uh b at breath and we're just using one buffer right now uh can we plot this yeah it looks like this right i mean obviously you cannot see all the samples in there but we are you know we're we're starting somewhere between the you know the five thousandth sample and a hundred thousand in so somewhere in here is our starting point and based on a frequency value, we're calculating the end of the sample. And phaser is just looping through that small section of samples. And it's small enough that when we repeat it, it's actually in the audio range. You know, it's, it produces something that's above 20 hertz. And so we hear a pitch. Like if we set this to be, you know, four it would sound like this or not maybe the uh 
maybe the filter is sort of, if we comment out the filter temporarily, like if we do that, uh, let's turn the amplitude down. Yeah. Or like, yeah. So that's, that's an example of looping through, uh, values stored in a buffer and the window is large enough that we actually just hear sort of a discrete sample eight times per second. But as we, you know, get faster and faster and faster, eventually it starts to take on pitch characteristics. Well, you know, something we haven't done at all is change this rate argument. It's just one, but we can. Oh, this is actually, this might be really cool. So if we make some lovely 60 hertz tone. And, oh, let's, let's bring our filter back. We want that filter. Yeah, okay, so with granular synthesis, I, I feel like the more I learn about it, the more I lecture about it, the more vague I feel, the, the more vaguely defined I feel that it is. So, uh, yeah, I mean, in, in general, granular synthesis involves combining many, many small portions of sound, which can be synthesized, which can be read from a buffer. Um, a lot, yeah, a lot of things just kind of, I mean, if you're just playing a bunch of samples back, you can make a really weak argument that you're doing granular synthesis because the grains are just really large and there's not very many of them and they're in a specific order and stuff like that. So uh, it's a blurry line, I think is what I'm getting at. You don't necessarily have to jump around the sample for it to be granular synthesis. I think it's just, it, when you call something granular synthesis, you're making a statement about the process that you're applying and in super collider there's a lot of granular objects granular unit generators uh yeah so if we go to you know we're in ugens generators granular and there's stuff like grain buff uh grain fm grain in grain sign and these all have some way of creating small fragments of sound and stringing them all together into a new audio stream. So that's, that's kind of what we're getting at, I guess. Yeah, it's not, I, I don't think granular synthesis is the most well-defined thing in the world. It's always like, well, you know, it's this with this many grains approximately and these processes. So. Okay, so we were doing something. What was it? <laughs> totally lost my train of thought. I mean, we could just make a pattern here, unless there's something else we wanted to do to this sound. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember. We were going to do rate stuff. So in addition to frequency, let's do the rate. So this rate is, is like a secondary pitch or frequency control so like if we just leave it at one we get this if we make it two phasers twice as fast which means we'll get an octave transposition up that kind of stuff if we do 0.5 now it's down to 30 hertz but th we can treat this as sort of like a a uh uh, like a detuning parameter, randomize which sample it chooses. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. So we can do uh, be at breath, which is an array of, I think six. Nope, 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 not the whole line, just this. Six, right, so if we just do dot choose, dot buff num, and yeah.
So now it is picking different buffers. The thing is, I guess it won't sound that different if we pick a different buffer because it's taking such a small amount of sound and just looping it that there's no way we could tell which buffer we've actually chosen. But the timbre will be different. Um, and we're also pick randomizing the starting sample. But it's a good thing to do. I think it's it's worth having that there. Why not? Okay, so now we can do something like random. Oh yeah, and there's this great method, right? So we, we're dealing with a, a ratio where two is an octave up, four is two octaves up, eight is three octaves. But if we want to do a semitone, that's an annoying thing to calculate, right? It's two to the power of one over 12 because we have 12 tone equal temperament. So it would be that value. So this would be up a semitone. Yeah, so that is, there's a better way. I mean, I think there's a, there's a more readable way to do it. We can use MIDI ratio. So MIDI ratio takes a number and treats it as a value in semitone. It's like a transposition value. And it turns it into a ratio that's suitable for multiplying frequency values. So zero, a zero transposition is one, right? So a frequency times one is itself. And if you do 12, it's two. It's basically two. It's close enough. And uh, minus 12 is like 0.5. So we can just do, uh, you know, we could, uh, let's just start with uh, minus 0.1 and positive 0.1 dot MIDI ratio. So this is going to transpose randomly down a tenth of a semitone or up a tenth of a semitone or anywhere in between so now we can get sort of a chorus effect oh i like how that sounds we're gonna keep that that's that's a good reminder that we should save our SCD file. And yes, I I think MIDI ratio uh actually MIDI ratio might only be a 12 tone equal temperament thing. Uh Yeah, I think it is. I mean there's a, there's a a gigantic world of like scales and tunings and stuff. Like there's all these objects and I really have not used them very much. I I know that the functionality is all there. I mean, there's like just this example here, you know, you can set, create a tuning object in just intonation or this is just tuning. And so you can get all of the ratios that you need, but it may be the case that the MIDI ratio method is specific to 12 tone equal temperament. At least I think that's the case. I might have to think about it a little bit more. I really don't know. But there's a lot of really cool possibilities with scale and tuning and all the ways you can manipulate those numbers. And if you've ever typed, uh, I think it's scale.directory, it gives you a list of all of the scales that are, and I don't know what most of these are. But, you know, you can do stuff like scale.directory.choose.degrees. And it gives, nope, that's not right. Scale.directory, oh, I think it's just, yeah, that's just post stuff. So choose, no, yeah, right. Scale.choose just picks a random scale. And you can do dot .degrees and you can see those are my scale degrees and they all have specific tunings and things like that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people use degree instead of MIDI note. Uh, just thinking in terms of scale degrees. It, it, you can get interesting effects that way. I, I have always used frequencies and MIDI notes. I guess that's just the world I've come from and what I'm most comfortable with.
I don't know. We can try to mess around with it, see what happens. But it's really nice to have frequency as an argument in this synthet because that means when we put it into a pattern, we can use all things like MIDI notes and degree and all the transposing things and stuff like that. So, all right, let's make a pattern. Um, let's see, I'm going to copy all my arguments just so I have all of them. And I just want to play some more of this real quick. I just like how it sounds. Yeah, it does kind of, it's got a slight Lamont Young flavor to it. I don't know. Not enough sign tones to be Lamont Young, though. All right, pattern time. And, okay, so yeah, I sometimes do this. You know, it's kind of slow and kind of sloppy. But it just helps ensure... Oh, come on. Helps ensure that I don't forget or mistype any... Pa well, you know, I can still mistype them. There's always a way to screw up. Now, see, if I were making a tutorial, I would make a lot of typos during recording. And then I'd go into iMovie. And then I would just edit them all out and speed up the video by like 300%. Keep typing a comma after that slash. No, don't play it. Goodness. Buff numb. All right. You know, it's sort of a sort of a balancing act sometimes. It's like the sometimes really cool synth thefts are just gonna have a lot of arguments because that's what makes them really cool. And but then again there is sort of beauty and simplicity in more simple synth thefts and finding interesting ways to make multiple synths using that synth dev. All right, all right, all right. I'm not going to play this yet because we need a duration. So let's just keep it simple. Uh, because habit, I guess. I just, let's, let's, yeah, we should just PDF. Why am I doing that? Uh, call this loop buff zero. I don't know. I should really standardize some naming schemes and stuff. Yeah, thank you for the reminder. I mean, it's I use synthdef and mididef and tdef and things like that. And then I just make my patterns with global environment variables. Like, what's wrong with me? Yeah, it's it. I do like this better. I don't know why I don't do this more often. I guess simplicity and habit, but this is more sensible. All right, so. <clears throat> um, let's just 
pick some values here. Uh, stain level. No, we're going to just use the attack and decay for now. Mm. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Set that back to zero. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so here's where we can do P key break. We'll have the fundamental be the lowest cutoff value. Eh, that might be a little too low. I think we'll, it'll get really quiet. We'll lock it down no lower than the second harmonic and the tenth harmonic. <clears throat> Do I have two pans? No, I have this pan dev. Let's put this with pan. It makes more sense to me. So let's just try this. Nope, 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 doesn't like it. Comma. Oh, yeah, that is working. All right, well, let's make use of some patterns here. Something like that. And see, it's because I uh, am kind of used to using pbind instead of pdef, I have this habit of just stopping the pattern whenever I want to change anything. It's really bad. Come on. Come on, Eli, focus. So, we'll do that. And, yeah, this is where we can do interesting stuff. Where's my rate? I want the rate to be below frequency. I like it there. And we'll do P white. Don't really need inf in P white and PX. I think that's the default value for those. Yeah, that's inf. But stuff like px rand, that default value is. I think its default value is one. So I put inf there. I just put inf everywhere. Mm. Okay, let's bring this back up. And. I want these to sustain. Yeah, key order is most of the time completely irrelevant because I think the way it works is that when pbind generates events, you know, before an event can be generated, it just needs to go through and figure out what type of event is this. Okay, this key has that value, this key has that value, and then boom, make the event. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Mm, I want to make some long sustain tones here. So we'll make a long attack. No P expirand somewhere between two and four. And release P expirand between six and ten. Right. And then I think the way this works. Let me make these a little shorter temporarily. It's that when you have a sustaining envelope, I actually don't do this very much, but I think you can have a sustain key, right? And this is the amount of time before a zero is sent back to the synth as a gate argument. So let's just try Something like this, and uh, 
uh, comma. Uh, I'm forgetting commas everywhere, probably. Yeah, there's one there. That does not sound like what I thought it would sound like. Oh, yes, I see what I did. <clears throat> yeah, I think legato is a a p mono or a p mono arctic thing. I think it's sustain. I mean, it seems to be working because the synths are disappearing. Yeah, I what I did wrong is I forgot MIDI ratio. So the reason we're hearing like tick 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 instead of actual pitches is because the rate of the phaser is somewhere between minus 0.1 and 0.1. So this means it's going to go 10 times as slow. A value of 0 means it doesn't advance at all. And this means it's going to go 10 times as slow but backwards. So we need MIDI ratio. There's our 500 hertz. OK, so. Let's make these a little longer. And let me just start by making a harmonic series. The first 12 harmonics of 100 hertz. And the exp rand. 0.3 to 1 inf and amp. We might have a lot of these piling up or, or sort of a medium amount. So we're going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.5, maybe all the way to 0 0.1. So now we can do stuff like times five dot MIDI ratio. And this will transpose the whole harmonic series up by a perfect fourth. Gonna do it a different way. So, because I want to pick the lower harmonics 
more frequently. So I think that'll work. Let's just save that one for now. Oops. Just, uh, because I have this bad habit of just constantly editing and tweaking and overwriting my code. I'm like, ooh, that sounds nice. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds great. And then it's like, oh, that thing that I did 15 minutes ago, it's gone. Like, I changed all the values. So I'm going to try to just copy and paste. I mean, this is my sketch file. So. You know. All uh, right, so let's try to make some chords or something. So I could try to mess around with degree. I just never really used it. So degree plus M transpose. I don't know. I think I'm going to do what I know rather than goof around with stuff that I don't fully understand. Uh, okay, so scale dot minor dot degrees. I guess I'm just, just, uh, Curious here. So if we do just some shorter notes. Uh, I forgot something. I feel like I forgot something. Um, degree. I'm no, not really sure what this is going to sound like. Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's zero through seven. We should uh yeah, I don't know. I just my brain does not think in terms of degrees. I tend to be kind of a midi note kind of person, but yeah, I do I do remember sort of how degree works. All right, so this is where I usually, let's scale dot minor, no, yes. Uh, we have this minor scale and we will add 30 to it. And <clears throat> mm. 
And we want to add, we ran some transposition value. That's not really what I wanted. Why is it darn quiet all of a sudden? Okay, yeah, that is working. That's... So maybe what I'll try to do now is is have it produce probably a good way to do this. Uh, you know, produce like four or five notes simultaneously and wait for a while, and then another four or five. So make some chords instead of just like a this sort of overlapping random melody. And I think I do that by taking any of the keys and like. First of all, let's make this like eight seconds. Make this no longer than, you know, approximately eight seconds. And if I just, if I do this, is that gonna work? Oh, result equals zero. Oh no, I broke it. I broke it. Um, well, well, well. Let's reload those buffers. There's something bad is happening here. OK. 
Okay. Okay. So that wasn't it. I think... Uh, God, I should really figure this out. Okay, I'm going to try this. Not exclamation point dollar sign. 3.4... Right, that makes four of them. Um, I want them to be all different. There's a there's an easy way to do this. I just know it. Um, I'm gonna probably break it again. But what if I do this? Nope, I broke it. Breaking things with Eli. On today's episode, we will break patterns by causing the server to get confused over and over again. My goodness. Where were we? We're down here and we let's try something a little simpler here. So if we do uh We do this. Try this. Ugh. Well, there is a stupider way to do this. Let's get back to what we had. I think it was that. And... Sounds good though. I'm okay with that sound. So the stupid way I'm thinking of is uh, PCEQ, where we do a zero wait time for, let's say, five notes. So five notes, one after the other, no wait time, followed by a P white somewhere between six and nine seconds just once and do that forever. And maybe I should just do this just to be safe.
Mm. I feel like not listening to this attack. You say five. That is not a five second attack. That is a 10 second attack. Do I have attack twice? I don't. Does it have to do with this? Oh, maybe it has to do with sustain. Yeah, my sustain is now... Yeah, I'm forgetting this is a sustaining envelope. So if I make this... Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Can do that, and do that, and we're just gonna turn this into uh, an attack release envelope. And it's nothing. Nothing at all. not actually all that accustomed to working with ADSR envelopes and patterns. I know they they work like that, but I think maybe it would make more sense if I just uh, modified this synthf so that it is a fixed duration envelope. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Attack, decay, attack, sustain, release, Uh huh. Uh, did I do all that right? So then, let's just see if it. Okay, it's okay with that. It's a good sign. So then, guess I'll edit this later. And this one here. Uh, and that. Name and that. And that's not a thing anymore. That's not a thing. So. And right, we need that to be something like that.
Alright, that's kind of what I wanted. Some chords. Okay, that's something to start. I think probably the next step is to just switch gears completely and build an entirely different synth depth that does something totally different. But I don't know if I have it in me right now. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap up, but... I, if anyone's watching and you've got super clutter code that is confusing you and you want to paste it to me, I could take a look at it. Just, uh, I mean, part of, part of doing this is that I, uh, am not just showing my own nonsense that I'm working on, but also helping people out if they need it. So yeah, yeah, I can, I can do, I can do some, some time on that if, if there's any interest, just let me know. Yeah, um I I would be down to help you with it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in to my itch. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Yeah, space time decor. If you, uh, what I would do is go to uh, pastebin.com. Yeah, thanks again. And the way I imagine things would work is you just go over to Pastebin.com. Like, if I wanted to share this code with you, I would select this, paste it here, and then click Create New Paste. And then this link up here in the URL bar, I would then copy that and paste it in chat like this. So then if you click that link, it should take you to pastebin.com where I pasted my code. And uh, and then you can just copy and paste that. So whatever you have in your Super Collider IDE, you could just drop it into Pastebin and click get new paste or whatever. And then paste it in chat.
Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, no, I mean, it's like, uh, I was thinking I'd be, I was thinking I'd stream for like two hours, so I'm willing to spend a little time, or at least like, you know, plant the seed so I can figure out what's going on. I mean, this isn't terribly long, uh, but can you tell me more about where you're having trouble or, you know, what part of the code specifically is giving you trouble? Sure thing, sure thing. Right, right, right. I got that. Uh, okay, so you've got a MIDI file. You're reading it in. And this, uh, I guess, creates a list of the MIDI events or the MIDI messages. Uh -huh. Right. So you're playing a big D e def. Uh, X. You got this function F. Oh, sorry, not F. X. I know my alphabet. I swear. Okay, MIDI sampler. This this big one here or yeah, PDF this test. Okay, I see you're you're concatenating these symbols. So that's the name of that one. And then you've got these inputs to the function, envelope, trig, speed, this envelope. All right, you provide an envelope. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not totally sure what I'm looking for basically like does it I mean and when you say MIDI sampler hmm
It works, but there's a value in p bind. Okay, let me see if I understand. Uh, you've got this key X in your P bind. It's a P funk. You pass the event in here. And I guess you post the amp divided by P. If the amplitude of the event is less than. I don't th think this is the right syntax. All right, so one, th one thing I'm noticing, uh, I, I don't think I've seen Maybe this is a valid syntax, but I have usually seen this instead. And what all you all you're trying to do is you're saying if if the amplitude is less than point zero five, then just stop the pattern, right? Turn off and delete this voice from inside the p-bind. Uh, I don't know, I'll be honest with you. I would need to dissect this. And I think it would take some time Still, I'm still trying to fully wrap my head around what this does. I mean, it's a pattern which plays. I mean, you, you've got a MIDI file and you want to use a pattern to play it. I mean, I, I'm guessing that's what you mean by MIDI sampler. And if so, I would probably call that like a, a MIDI player or something, or like a MIDI file reader. Um. Okay.
We have ideas that a sound is a texture. A whole MIDI file is also a texture. We have samplers for sounds. Envelopes, which can be played back at any page from any polyphony. A sampler for MIDI files. Also has envelopes at the macro level. And can play back as many instances of a MIDI texture at different speeds and pitches. So are you trying to create sound from like a large scale sequence of MIDI messages? Yeah. Yeah, uh, could you create a sampler for MIDI files? Okay, but where does the sound come from? I mean, are you, this this pattern is sending MIDI data out. I mean, no, there's no synthesis happening here. So when you say blocks of MIDI that can be synthesized, if you mean convert them into sound, then, I mean, there's got to be some synthesis either in Super Collider or, you know, I, I, I guess you're sending these to a DAW because you're using the IAC bus. So I, I, what I don't see anywhere is, uh, uh, what am I looking for here? You know, like, so you've got the, these event types are MIDI. They have a destination. They have a channel. But what types of messages are they? I mean, are they, are they note on messages? I, I assume they're note on messages but I don't see that anywhere. I don't see any note number. I mean, you've got this MIDI file and I, do, I don't know this class well enough to know what this does. It looks like it creates a list, but yeah, I just not, not exactly sure. So, so when you, when you make, let me track this down real quick. So, tutorials, defense events. Uh, there's the practical guide. I never find it when I need it. Uh, there it is. Yeah, so if you're and you know, like I, I, uh, I, MIDI files being processed by the PBIM through P chain, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't quite know what's happening here. I mean, you're chaining this P bind with this thing, P fin. I have no idea what fin is here. Limit. Oh, okay.
Okay, so this this pbind is processing MIDI events. Yeah, I I don't think I can make too much headway on this. It, it's it's pretty. I mean, it's, it's fairly dense. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of patterns going on here, a lot of patterns inside patterns, and I just don't think I can do a proper job of cutting it up and and making it uh, understandable for myself. But what I would suggest is try to turn this, like so you've got some problem. This is what I always do and I have some problem. And I, maybe I'm telling you something you already know. I'm, I don't mean to, you know, say, state the obvious here. But what I would suggest doing is to just try to boil it down to the absolute, absolute, simplest version of this so you know maybe make a midi file for yourself which is just one midi note or you know or maybe maybe five or so, just like a few really simple stuff nothing fancy and you know maybe fix some of these keys you know like instead of all this stuff for amp just say amp 0.5 or something and And then just try to figure out, you know, what needs to happen here. Also not sure what X is. Yeah, I don't know. I um, I don't think I'm going to make any more. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have like an aha moment here. This is a little bit more complex there. Uh yeah, th I, there's a way to do that. I mean, I I I've read enough stuff on on the uh, Super Glider forums, where you know there's there's this sort of general language about accessing a pattern's environment or accessing, you know, the an event's environment or something along those lines. And uh, I thought I saw something recently on the forum that was sort of related at least maybe might um i'm looking at the forum now okay i'm gonna uh i think this this is what I'm looking at, and I'll put it on stream in just a second. Uh, where am I? Hey, thank you, Beetle. I really appreciate it. Uh, is it this one? I actually, I think it is. Uh, yeah. It it might be might be yours. Oh my God! Yeah, that's your exact code. <laughs> so, yeah, I. My bad. Okay. Yeah. And and just I didn't read it in a lot of detail, but uh, Julian's most recent reply looked like it had some sensible answers in it. But yeah, I think that's a little, I'd have to spend a couple hours picking it apart and trying things on a simpler basis to build it up. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't wave a magic wand. I wish I could, but this is uh, it's a little bit much to be hit with all at once. But I appreciate you sharing the code and, and asking for help. I, uh, yeah. Try to do a little bit better next time. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'm going to get out of here, I think. This has been fun. Thank you, everybody who's watching, for tuning into the stream. Really appreciate the watching and the viewing and all that. I uh, hope you're enjoying the streams. I will plan to be here probably same time next week. Like it was, it's 5 p.m. Central Time where I am. Just uh, I'll probably tweet it out 
earlier in the day. Yeah, I think that's it. Thanks again for watching. And see y'all next time.